Welcome to the Morning Scoop for Friday, July 16th. This is your Daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Mark Givler, not Tom Orr. Uh, Tom's still still out. He'll be back at some point next week. Uh, the Minnesota game is in 48 days, and the game is in 135 days, and uh, Big Ten media days are, I believe, six days away, so we are, we are getting very close. Um, I am joined by Bill Green, so this is not the Gives in the Bank podcast, just the morning scoop. Uh, but Bill, uh, Bill decided to join me here uh, for the Friday morning episode. We're going to do a few quick hitters here. First of all, you know, Bill, have you recovered from the uh, the month of June? Yeah, I actually loved it, and I, I, you know, I've been doing this for I think over twenty years now. And usually, you get to July one, I'm so sick of camps and all that that I, I'm look forward to that July vacation period. Coaches are on vacation now. Um, the kids know to take their vacations now because camps are over and, you know, two days are about to start and, and we always take our vacations now. This is kickback time. Well, it, it's not. I mean, I missed it. I missed those camps. I mean, I, I had as much fun as I've ever had going to camps this year and even with all the official visits and everything. I don't know. It, it was just so different and you can get into a rut you know, the, under the old way. And then I think because we missed a full year last year, kind of got to us a lot, a lot, but then this year, um, the camps were great. I, I really enjoyed being at Ohio state. And, um, I think the smaller camps were, were the way to go for, for the media. Now I don't know if Ryan Day will do that next year that way for us. I hope he does. But um, no, I actually enjoyed it. I, I, I kind of missed everything. You know, it was fun hanging out with the crew. You know, normally I've covered camps either by myself or maybe with one other guy when, you know, he's tracking half the field, I'm tracking half the field. You don't even speak. But right. the way we did it with, you know, yourself and Kirk and Tom and Mick, and, and it was just great. You know, Corey Dennis said it best, man. Corey Dennis said, here comes the scoop mafia. You know, and it was great. So I miss it. I really do. I wish there were more camps going on right now. I I really enjoyed it as much as any year I've ever done this. So a lot of guys are committing now. Right. Um, a lot of guys are narrowing their lists. Um, obviously, Ohio State's landed a few commitments recently. Um, a few other targets have narrowed their list. Let's just talk about a couple of those guys real quick. Um, you know, Hero Canoe, I think it's like nine or ten schools yeah. now. It was yeah. out. Um, you know, we, we don't have to dissect that entire list by any means, but, you know, just, I know we've been pretty confident on hero canoe. Are you, you know, what is your confidence level still where it was maybe, in, uh, back a month or so ago coming out of that visit to Ohio state. And do you see any potential speed bumps here, um, down the stretch? Well, I really don't. And, and I haven't really dug back in on that very much since he was at Ohio state, you know, it was, it was really, a kind of an odd situation. You know, he's a very young kid, still 16, you know, so very impressionable, but man, he loved it at Ohio state. I mean, you could tell, I mean, he stayed that second day when his crew, did they go to Michigan? I think the next day. Yeah. And he was like, eh, I don't want to go there. I'm just going to stay here. So he stayed at Ohio state and his coaches weren't there. None of his teammates were there. He was just kind of hanging out, you know, and he, he would talk to the Ohio State coaches. He would talk to the Ohio State players. He would talk to us. He would talk to campers. He would talk to parents. I mean, I, that kid seemed like, you know, if word would have come out that he was ready to enroll at Ohio State early and, and just move in and get that career started, I, I probably would not have been surprised. Um, he just was so comfortable there. He loved it there. Um, so, I just bought into that totally. And, and you could tell it wasn't him playing any game or, you know, trying to fool the media. It, he loved it. So, um, yeah, man, until I hear something different from someone, uh, I, I think they're getting hero canoe. I thought the connection was made with Day and Larry Johnson. And um, to me, it seemed like that kid found his home. Him wanting to come back and like work with Larry Johnson again, I just thought was kind of fascinating. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I still, he went home. So he, he actually went home to Germany um, to kind of decompress, I think a little bit after all the visits and, and see his family before he's got to come, you know, he, he just arrived back uh, yeah. 
I want to say it was like Wednesday evening. I think he got back into the States um, to uh, get his high school uh, season uh, started and get, get rolling there. But uh, I think Ohio state's in great shape. Um, and it, it, you can't play the geography game here. Cause if anything, no. he's, he's out in California right now, if anything, moving East to like Columbus would actually shorten the flight to Germany, which yeah. I don't know if that really matters. It's going to no, be a I long flight so. no matter what, but um, you know, so it's hard to play the geography game. I, I don't, that just strikes me as a kid that wants to maybe play for Larry Johnson. So we'll see how that goes. Um, official visit for uh, the Penn state game right now is what it's looking like. So, yeah. um, I think they're, I think they're pretty firmly in the driver's seat. Here, the next one to me is fascinating. You just dropped the top three. That's four-star offensive lineman Addison Nichols. And I got to give you some credit here. <clears throat> Regardless of what happens, I do have to give you a little bit of credit here. You've had a source for a while who said, don't count out North Carolina. And we kept saying, North Carolina? Right. He right. didn't official there. Like he does, It wasn't a school that particularly got brought up by, by him a lot. And there they are on the top right. three with Tennessee and right. Ohio State. Where do you have – I mean, is this slipping away from Ohio State at this point? You know, I thought he was a dead stone pipe lock to Ohio State, you know, uh, around June 1. I would have, you know, I would have put a huge crystal ball pick in with a confidence level of 10. And then I kind of dropped a little bit, you know. And that's why, like, I keep doing this um, feature every couple of weeks that, you know, um, yes, no, maybe – and I'm tracking these kids from the beginning, from April. And I'm going to track them all the way through. I put any new information in red, but you can go back and look and see my thoughts, you know, in April, May. What, and, and I just keep going down and down on that kid. And I don't understand it. And I don't know if I've got a great source, but maybe I do have a great source on this, you know, because he gave me that North Carolina stuff. And I thought that was out of left field. It, that was a surprise to me if he would have said Akron. Um but yet here they are. So I, I continue to think that Ohio State should be in really good shape. I mean, he really fits Ohio State from a comfort and relationship point of view. I, I think they got that handled. But, you know, it, it, this kid's done a great job, man, with playing it close to the vest. And, you know, I if I have to make a pick, I, I don't know if I could right now. You know, I've taken him from lock to – you know, yeah, probably now I'm at maybe, you know, I don't know. He's done a great job with fooling everybody. So we'll see. You know, the parents have that Tennessee connection. The North Carolina thing I was told about six weeks ago, and I didn't want to believe it. And Ohio State makes so much sense. So I don't know. We'll see. Could I see him at Ohio State? Absolutely. Could I see him going to either of those other two? Yep, I sure could. I talked to him the other day, right before, I don't know, maybe an hour before he put his list out. And uh, you would think that would have helped me <laughs> get a re It actually uh, confused me even more because he went on and on and on about Ohio state and the answers on Tennessee and North Carolina were shorter, but yet there's this like underlying tone of, yeah, distance and family and maybe playing time. And I just, I, I don't, I don't know, but he, but he, he had more to say about Ohio state than the other two schools, but gosh, yeah, I didn't I come away from that feeling better for, about Ohio state. And it was, I, I don't know that anybody feels they have this one pegged. And I mean, from college coaches point of view, yeah, I don't think they have a clue here so and and the funny thing is usually the kids that you know really fool us or fool everybody they're usually game players supreme right this kid's not that no he's not a game player he's not screwing with anyone he's just going through the process and and we're having a hard time figuring him out yeah i think it's kind of fun yeah it um, is oh it's it's you know like it, look it, we we've it, we've been you know waiting to get back into these type of situations we didn't yeah. have them for so long you know, yeah it's kind of it is kind of fun it's probably not fun for the fans but it's yeah and it's fun usually, for us to... like usually these kind of kids are the easiest ones to figure out yeah. he's not not for me no. so I'm, I'm officially at maybe maybe slash probably maybe for ohio state so we'll see i mean but whoever he picks not gonna be a surprise to me 
Uh, then we got another one who we expect to drop a top four uh, here in the near future. And I white uh, big time pass rusher out of Philadelphia. Oh, uh, this is a guy, I, again, I, I don't know that Ohio state's always been one of his top schools, but he's always been one of their top choices uh, among, you know, all positions. Uh, this is a guy they love. They've recruited him a long time. I do think uh, I wouldn't take Ohio state right now. I would take the field, but I do think, they got a little momentum going on that official visit. And uh, so he's going to drop this top four and, you know, I'm taking the easy path out here. Um, and I'm just, I think it's going to be the four schools that he's visited th- those last four weeks. I, I think um, Ohio state and the three sec schools, Florida, Georgia, Alabama, you know, Clemson is in there and we'll get to that kind of thing. We're going to talk about Clemson here in a minute, but um, you know, do you expect that to be the four or is there, you know, what, you know, and, and I guess maybe even more importantly, will Ohio, do you think Ohio State's going to make it and in, in their chances, you know, kind of moving forward? I definitely think they're going to be in the final four. Absolutely. I think they will be. Um, do I think they're going to get the kid? I don't, but you know, it's Larry Johnson and, you know, I would love to see that kid, find his way back to Columbus one more time. I'd love to see him come for the Oregon game or, you know, something. Come to a home game and see. Keep keep things going. Keep the conversation going. I was told something interesting that he and Walter Nolan have kind of talked about maybe playing together, you know, and how they would – work together and i know you know florida's working that angle and well that he's going to ohio state right because walter nolan's going to ohio state <laughs> well walter nolan came and peed at ohio state for about five minutes after he <laughs> drank too much coffee on the way to michigan so i could you know florida thinks they're like working it that maybe yeah. they can pull both of them you know so we'll see there i mean i think alabama makes a lot of sense remember we, we talked about jt tool malo not wanting to play in the bama that three, four, well, I think Eni White fits that three, four just to a T. So I would think that, you know, comfort with the system, I think, you know, but I think he fits four, three. He, he can play either. I mean, he's so talented and so good, but I could see Alabama really appealing to him as a stand up guy in their defense. So, you know, um, I, I, we'll see. You know, this is just way too tough to throw a pick out there right now. But yeah, I, I think Ohio State will be in the final four, and then you work it from there. Get him back on campus one more time. Yeah, I agree. I agree they'll be on there. And I also I also wouldn't pick Ohio State right now, but I don't know that I'd want to try and pick one school right now. I <sighs> Alabama or Georgia, maybe. I mean, maybe, maybe yeah. Alabama, if you put, put a gun to my head. I mean, I I don't I wouldn't want that situation. <laughs> I'd like to let this one play out a little bit. Um, yeah, there's been talk that he could decide soon. I actually I don't think he will. Even if he does, I don't yeah. think this is over until December. I really don't. Yeah, or at, least, at least, you know, Thanksgiving ish. I, I don't. I think there's several months left to go here. I, I think Ohio State's got a, a real decent chance of getting him back on campus in the fall. And, um, you know, we'll see how that goes if, if he does any of that. I mean, I mean, the reality is Ohio State's the closest school to oh, him. Yeah. Right. So right. You, you'd think they would have a, you know, if he's going to, and I don't think he's going to just sit at home from September through December. So I think he'll get out and do some stuff. So, you know, get him back on campus, see what happens. Right. Keep hammering home. Right. That, no, you don't have to be a three, four guy. We can make, you know, here's why you're a four, three guy and sure. you know, see what happens. But um, you know, one school we, we we're not, we don't think is going to make the cut is, is Clemson. Now we'll see, maybe he makes the official, maybe he makes an official to Clemson in the fall, but we're going to, we want, I want to talk about this for a minute. Clemson has a policy that they've been adhering to now uh, the last couple of years um, since they've started doing the, the spring and summer officials that they are not allowing kids to do spring and summer officials that they have to come in, in the traditional fall and then winter months. Um, at first it didn't seem to really impact things. It feels like it's starting to, do you agree? I mean, do you see it that way and kind of what's your take on that, policy and again do you think it's starting to hurt Clemson yeah I definitely do um this is gonna this is fascinating because they're probably the only big time program in America doing it this way so they're either going to be the dumbest people in the room or the smartest people in the room you know 
on one hand, I've seen all these kids taking all these visits, making their lists and making their commitments. And I'm not seeing Clemson hit any of this stuff right now. And it seems like they're really stalled and falling off kids' lists. But if we come to October and kids have taken all these July, June visits and they wear off and then there's Clemson with official visits left for every darn kid in the country, committed kids, uncommitted kids, and they start pounding guys, bringing them in late and, and really farming things up, you know, we'll see. I mean, to me, it's a huge stretch. It's a, it's a huge gamble. I mean, it's a huge roll of the dice. I wouldn't adhere to this policy. I think it's wrong. But, you know, if they pop a bunch of kids late when everybody else has already exhausted their visit and you can't get that kid back on campus again, you haven't seen him since June, maybe they are the smartest people here. We're going to see. This is a great test case for how to run these summer, summer officials. And it's going to be a great one to kind of revisit, you know, at the end of December when we see how all the early signees go. And then let's see how these top kids worked out for Clemson. I'm against it. I think it's not the smart way to go about it. But, you know, we're just guessing right now. We'll know come, you know, on, you know, on the second signing day when all the smoke clears, you're going to see if this was smart or not. I don't think it is, but we're going to find out. I'm just trying to understand their logic because I know there's been some public comments made by um, Dabo Swinney that uh, about his coaches, you know, being able to spend time with their, with their families over the summer. And, but they've had camps all June. They've had kids on campus. Right. They have Makes recruiting no events. So I, I'm not sure I'm following that. It, it's gotta be something else. Maybe it's, maybe it's what we talked about or what you, you know, what you just said, maybe it's, we're going to wait this out and let everyone else we'll burn the their official rules. And then we're going to, we're going to get them on an unofficial, hopefully right. in June or July. And then we'll bring them back on the official later when maybe they don't, you know, maybe they don't want to travel. Yeah. Maybe they want to focus on their high school season, but we can actually fly them in. Sure. I, I don't They'll know. Have, they're going to have one bullet left in the gun when everybody else's bullets have been fired. Yeah. Is it too late? We're going to find out. I mean, yeah. they could prove this could be proven out to be really brilliant. I, I don't think it will be, but I've been wrong before. I think at some point it might not be this. I mean, they may do fine this fall. They may do fine this winter. I mean, there's, it's, you know, they're obviously they're rolling on the field right now, but I think at some point they are going to have to back down at this again. Sure again, may. it may not be for next year, but like for the, in the next couple of years, cause this is not, Recruiting processes seem to be ending sooner and sooner, it, quicker and sure. quicker. Kids are getting this over with. They like they like the spring and summer visits, committing, and then it's just focus on your senior season and where you're going to go to school. They, and a lot of them are graduating early. You know what I yeah. mean? How many of them are out of high school? You know, in mid December now they're gone. They're done. High school's over with. So they are getting it done early. You yeah, know, I, you know, you know, you know, you know, when they first went through the early signing period. I guess that maybe 10 to 15% of their top recruits would sign early. Mm -hmm. I was dead wrong. It's 75, 80% for signing early, getting it over with. And they're at, they're at college, you know, June 4th, June 5th, their college career started, you know, and I, yeah. it, so it's different now. And I think Clemson, I think they're waiting too long and I think they're going to be firing their last bullet. And I don't know if they're going to be able to hit any targets. We'll see. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Again, I mean, it sounds like Kenyatta Jackson, that's going to hurt them there. It sounds like it's going to hurt them with, with the Nye White. Sure. We'll see. I, like I said, I think eventually they're going to have to, to, to re-evaluate uh, this. And I, I'm, I'm with you. I when, when, we did the, when the first early signing periods came around, I'm like, why would any five-star kid sign early? Right. Why would you sign? You don't know what, you know, coaches could leave, you know, just, sure. you know after Christmas. <laughs> And then you're the, you're, you're sign. I mean, so I thought for sure, I'm like, why would any kid with leverage sign? And they all did. <laughs> so yeah. I, you know, so I, you know, what do I know, I guess, but um, so I, I am, you know, but now that we know this, that kids are, you know, making these earlier decisions and getting enrolled early. I, yeah. I just don't know how long they're going to be able to get away with this. They're, they're going to really have to, you know, take a hard look at that. I think this off season, but eh, we'll see. Um. I think that about does it. We, uh, you know, appreciate you guys uh, listening, um, you know, check out 
BuckeyeScoop.com. We got a bunch of uh, July coverage here. We got Nevada Nuggets from from summer workouts. Um, Bill's doing his blogs. His Thursday chat this this week was another great one. Uh, check that out. You can get caught up on that on the message board if you haven't. Uh, YouTube.com slash BuckeyeScoop for all our videos. And then, of course, you can search Buckeye Scoop and you'll find our podcasts on wherever you listen to podcasts. So um, appreciate you guys. And uh, we will see you Monday.